So this is the first time we are implementing hierarchical model. Before last chapter, we have seen like a various model, like the no pooled, complete pooled, and uh, hierarchical. I'm probably doing an awful job at pronouncing hierarchical, but uh, bear with me. Okay, so what's the goal of this first? Let, let's say first also like currently we are doing it without predictors. So we kind of reproducing the same schema of the book. First, we are trying to, un to condition uh, Y, let's say Y with the data, and then we'll add predictors. But on this example, we'll not do any kind of uh, using a predictor. We are just using an hierarchical model with Y and trying to explain Y. Y is, is the response value we want to understand. Uh, uh, so the goal is like build an hierarchical model. Uh, it's like an E here, simulate it, and, and uh, use it to like as a predicting or get a better understanding. It's quite long, so I will try to go fast. Okay, the data set. The data set is, uh, was provided in Tidy Tuesday. I didn't check, uh, Federica, if you have done the, this Tidy Tuesday. I didn't have time, sorry. Uh, it was about uh, data from Spotify, and it's a subset of it because, like, the only, um, the, the limit is to 350 um, songs. So, this is, this covers the popularity of, popularity ranging from zero to 100 uh, from 350 songs. Uh, and this covered 44 artists. So you have 44 artists with uh, 350 songs. And um, well, the, the asked us like to, <clears throat> to, to play a bit to explore the data. So I just do a quick histogram. I'm not too much a ggplot person. So sometimes I just, go quickly with base, base plot. So we see like you have a huge variation between the number of songs per artist. You have few artists, one of them that are 40 songs, and some of them that are just three to four, I don't remember. So you have to keep into uh, this distribution into accounts uh, for letters. And then we are, we are still going back to use the complete pooling, the no pooling and the partial pooling, which is your archical model on this, uh, to compare them with these data sets. So if you weren't here last week, no problem. Okay, I share with you my, my top three most listening song group from last week also. So in case you are like in trouble and want to uh, discover or not discover new music. So a cover, uh, Dina Summers, Dodo, and uh, a stream like Purple Cat. It's a good stream if you are, if you need like some background music. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I was going to say, I have not migrated to the new pipe yet. Oh, yeah. This is where I, so I have done it. You just, uh, yeah, I have also like uh, tried the new pipe for everything. Like this is the, for like, I will say 95%, uh, I haven't seen any kind of difference. You just have to change the placeholders. You know, the placeholders okay. is not dot anymore. It's underscore for a lot of stuff. Also, uh -huh. uh, when piping uh, with the Magrid pipe, it still display you error, which is not the case with a new pipe. W error or warning. You know, if you are like piping with the new pipe, like you have like, let's say, uh, you don't, let's say you are using a soon to be deprecated uh, function. Let's say, mm -hmm. for example, gathers or spread, they, are, they will be deprecated at, at times. Uh, we'll use it here. We are not using uh, here directly, but we are using a function that are calling them. And then with the new pipe, you do not have the, this warning. Okay. So this is the only difference that I have seen. And I kind of like just piping in simple object also. You know, like table, go to east. I think this is, well, I found it convenient for like quick, quick stuff. Yeah, for sure. Okay. But okay, I try to. This is no big deal. I don't think it matters too much, you know. Uh, okay, then uh, we'll first with the complete pooled model. That's meaning uh, we will not care about like, um, oh, uh, <clears throat> we will not care about the artist. Before I like, just introduce few notation. Uh, 
we will indicate the every artist will be G, every song of G artist will be I, G, G, this is correct? Well, anyway. And uh, the number of songs we have for uh, G artist will be NG. And so with like um, Maya X, I don't know her, uh, she, has, she has just four songs in this data sets. So, uh, or N, uh, it, she's the first one of the data set, that's why it's N1 and uh, it's four. Just notation, this is not, I don't think it matters too much, but yeah. Uh, we check out a bit uh, about it, of the distribution of the popularity. And it looked at normal, kind of. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> it's not normal, but the author said that's enough, that's good enough. So they went with the normal, normal, complete models. I give you like the parameters. So why what we are trying to predict will be like the popularity. It, uh, it's depend of a global mean of popularities of every song and a global variation and standard deviation or, or variance of um, of all these uh, songs and it's it's follow a normal distribution so it's the mean and the uh, variance so take two parameters and then this is like this part i never understood but maybe you can provide me inside uh, then the mean is defined also. I mean, I understand the, why we are defining the mean as a normal distribution that takes 50, because like this was like, um, like they said, like uh, mm, uh, the average popularity of song on Spotify is, is, is around uh, 50. So this 50 makes sense. This is like the 52 that seems very high to me on the standard deviation. I don't know why they use that. Let's make a very huge mean, but uh, I will go like, I don't know, even 10 seems good enough. I don't understand this. So if you have like explanation, I will take it, but. And then uh, the standard deviation prior is like an exponential, mostly because we want it uh, positive, but we have other choice of prior. I haven't had a meme a bit below about this prior of standard deviation. So you, mu and sigma are global parameters. Here, you, you are just doing like global because like we are just putting everything into one bag. And, uh, and that's it. Mu is the global mean popularity of songs and the standard deviation between them. So we can implement a classic stand GLM. Uh, there is no trick here, I don't think. Oh yeah, no. The trick is here, like the, the formula. Uh, because like uh, we want, um, <clears throat> we do not want to have like uh, any kind of predictors. So uh, the minus one is the one that do that. I think no, just the first one. We are just taking the first uh, parameters. Here, this is it. This is the hard part, the hardest part of it. Is knowing like, but this follow like the classic general formula of base R. Uh, this is here. Look, see, I don't understand where I now we are putting 2.5. I guess it's because it's auto scale. I don't know. Like in the model, it's 52, and here it's 2.5. I'm lost, but I can I can live with that. <laughs> uh, then <clears throat> we use like a quick um, uh, like I, I will not like, I don't think we need to check the model or every kind, this is very basic stuff. So I, I haven't, uh, the author didn't do it and I didn't check like the trace, the fuzzy caterpillar plot, et cetera, et cetera. I think uh, we are good. Uh, then uh, we, pull, uh, we pull a summary of our simulation and that's provided here. So we get the intercept, the sigma and the mean, um, that's it. So, um, and we have all their confidence at 80%. This is, this is why right it, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is nothing new. Um, we just have like, uh, try, we just have condition uh, our model with data. Uh, quiz. Oops, I have to hide it. Um, so, let's say we have three uh, artists. Mia X, which is an artist with the lowest mean popularity in our data set. That's maybe why I don't know her. I don't. Beyonce, well, I know Beyonce. 
which is nearly the highest mean popularity in our data set. And uh, months and bits, uh, that I don't know either, that's an artist uh, outside of the data set, that we do not have any kind of song. Using this model, uh, what uh, will be the approximate post post predictive mean for a new song for these three artists? We are just three of us, so. <laughs> <laughs> what will be our guess? You don't need to, to, to give numbers, just like, you know, the logic of what the model is doing. Yeah. Oh. There are plenty of quiz in these uh, chapters. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you focus on that multitask and other things. Mm. Don't multitask too much. OK, basically, the model will not make any differences. Because you, it, there is no point in the model where you have any information about the artist. Which makes less sense because we already know like Maya X have less chance to get uh, uh, for if she releases a new song, the probability that she will uh, produce a high popularity song is less than, for example, Beyonce. That's it, and um, so we can no, we can do it. Like uh, yeah, this is like uh, so this this producing this this little graphic. So every kind of new song that's produced by an artist produces the same. Like if, if you ask the model to uh, produce, uh, the, the, the blue dots are the, the mean popularity. And the blue lights uh, dot with the range are like what the model will predict for a new song. So here we see like every artist, and even if we had more, we have the same uh, results. Because like we are not using the information in the complete pool model. OK? OK, then we go with the no pool model. So here, if you remember correctly, sorry, what we are doing is like uh, we will build a model for every artist. That's why if we want to check like this, uh, if we want to check like the, um, the this is like basically like the density plot for every artist. And we see like we have few, uh, I noted the key points. Obviously, some artists are more popular than others. And some have like very stable popularity. And other like produce songs that are totally less popular. And some were like big hits. So <clears throat> we'll change our model to reflect that. Here's the top one. I the haven't checked the crazy curves. I mean, this is this is not only the top one, but the very like um, uh, sharp. Sh oh yeah, I think it's Beyonce, but I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we we'll build a model trying to bring a new song. Uh, why uh, high G, which is like a new song from like um, uh, an an artist. And it will depend on the mean song popularity of the artist and a global standard deviation. Uh, oh, no, it's not global. Like, even I should have, I, I don't, I'm thinking well that it doesn't have like a little J, like to specify like it's within each artist. Same uh, model, basically, except no, like the trick is here. Like, uh, we will, uh, for every, we will develop the model for every artist uh, and no predictors, minus one. Okay, uh, still like this same, like 2.5 that I do not understand. But, oops, it's, 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 it's. the quiz. So now we have three artists. Mia X, artist with the lowest mean popularity in our data set, Beyonce the same, and still the new artist. What do you think like this model imply? There is no trick. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm going. Let's go quick because like the chapter is long. 
Okay, so obviously uh, the production is way better for every artist because like we are like basically like uh, uh, doing a model with just the data of the artist. So it will totally predict that Mia X uh, will maybe have a less popular song uh, if she releases one and Beyonce will have like more probability to get uh, a hit. And, but uh, technically uh, the drawback is like, mm, we are ignoring information from other artists uh, and some artists have low um, number of songs. For example, Mia X just have four songs and some are 40. So we are losing kind of a part of information by doing that, by losing this information on all popularity of song can be um, explained, let's say. Uh, and so we are losing this. Also, uh, we are assuming that no other artist help us understand the popularity of a specific artist, which is a strong point of view. Can be like, you know, you can make this, uh, this argument, but it's a strong point of view. So we cannot generalize outside of it because this is where we start. We are doing like, no, with this model, we are saying like, no, uh, no, um, no, um, uh, no, not popular, uh, any kind of popularity uh, uh, song will influence uh, the others, of other artists, sorry. I don't know if it makes clear. So yes, this is just like the assumption of the model. So we, we get back to it. Okay, so now we are finally building the hierarchical model. What does it mean? It means we have a hierarchy. Uh, and this layer, and we have we build it in three layers. The layers does not the one, two, and three layer does not necessarily uh, have any kind of meaning. It's just like a way to organize them. I still think like they're organizing like from top to bottom. This is my understanding. But you could build it uh, backwards. And even like if I think if you write the model in STAM. You will probably start by setting up your priors, then uh, because like uh, your layer two will call your priors and your layer one will call layer two, it will need to be like um, the way like it computes stuff. But here we are just modeling, so it does not matter. I mean, we are just writing the equation. So the layer one is basically all every song uh, popularity by within an artist. So uh, we have an artist, this is why like it's sigma y and mu y, which is the mean popularity of uh, an artist and the standard deviation of their song. Then uh, we check all typical, uh, <clears throat> the popularity value between artists. So uh, it should be like even letters. So here we have mu, the mean popularities. That's very uh, according to mu, the mean global, um, I will define them later maybe so. The, the global mean popularities and the standard uh, mean popularities of every artist. So the layer one is, is more defined here. Uh, this is within the, so this is another important term like within group and between group. Here we are inside an artist and uh, we are like uh, calculating the, this is basically like the <clears throat> complete pooled model. So if we stop here, we just uh, know so, no pull, sorry, no pull. We are basically not taking into account uh, the rest. So here, this is where we are starting building the hierarchy on the layer two. We are pulling the global average, the mean popularity rating for the most average artists. And uh, we use it to get um, <clears throat> the mu G, so the mean popularity of every artist. They justified in using a normal distribution because it kind of looked the same of normal, which, okay. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then we set up the prior. So we have just to define uh, mu, uh, no, let me see, yeah, mu, sigma u, which is the standard deviation of the mean um, uh, popularity and uh, sigma y, which is the standard deviation of song uh, inside the group of artists. So here I put you like a small, um, <laughs> I found one. 
<laughs> because like this is why exponential one well it was a lot of debate of what kind of prior you should use for standard deviation at one point can be a Gauchy distribution a uniform distribution uh it just needs to be um positive <laughs> and apparently like Risha McElroy like advocating for exponential one so people know are using exponential one so <laughs> that's it still I don't understand this 52 year so but so it's basically it like we are like dividing um uh well we are just adding another layers of our models that's take into account that every artist will be related to every artist this is it so every mean popularity of an artist uh will depend of a global mu and a standard deviation of artists okay <clears throat> is it good so I, I i stole this uh this meme from this guy uh this is one way this also correspond of what we call sometimes a one-way analysis of variance or ANOVA. Uh, to relate to other like statistical analysis of maybe up down. This is the same idea. Like uh, when you do an ANOVA, you are comparing the mean between groups and the mean and the standard deviation, obviously. Uh, another way to think about it is currently like this, uh, this part, like the Y, E, G, uh, uh, depend uh, of normal the yg can also be uh, write it as a, a linear equation so the mean of an artist of mean popularity of an artist is a, is the global mean mu and a small variation and the small variation this is basically like our um, uh, where is it uh, this is basically it like our layer two Maybe it's better. I think I understand this way better. But here it's just centered because uh, that's why this is zero and not mu because like we are centering to the mean. Okay, if I take an example, let's say like uh, we have like an artist that have 65, uh, I mean, that have 65 popularities. If mu is 50, uh, 55, then be, uh, the, the difference is 10. We will see an example like more in detail later. Within versus between group variability, it's something that's maybe already seen in other kind of uh, statistic. Uh, we can, uh, here we have two sources of variability. We have like uh, the variation bit, uh, within the group, which is the song of the same artist. This is basically sigma y. And we have the variety between the group. So uh, artist to artist, which is basically sigma mu. So you have like 44 artists. Every one of them have, let's say, a mean uh, popularities. And you have like a standard deviation of that. This is sigma mu. OK, uh, except like I, I write it like a kind of an R expression. Uh, we are speaking about most uh, the the total variance is this is the uh, is the variance so it's not the standard deviation so you have to square it so um, the the variability is not the standard deviation it's the variance so, and the variance it's the first one is the variance within the group so it's the square of the standard deviation of uh, within is y and the second one is between the group so it's the standard deviation squared of mu. Uh, another way of thinking about that is like you can sum, uh, you can divide the standard uh, the variance uh, inside uh, within the group, like for example the standard deviation from song to an artist, divided by the two of them, the, two, the standard deviation within and between, and it will give you a proportion of the total variance explained by difference within each group. If instead uh, on the denominator you use like the the the, the variance uh, between group, you will have the proportion of the total variance explained by difference between group. Okay, it's it's not new in statistics, but uh, uh, 
take some time, like if you have trouble, like do the exercise. Oh, I have a failure here. Stuff that I'm less familiar with and I haven't did understand it. So you have a correlation in song popularity of the same artist, okay? Uh, the we, inside of the same group because like the song popularity of an artist depend of the popularity of the artist. So it's correlated. Uh, but uh, we are assuming like each group are independent. That's mean like the variation between like, let's say kind of what we have seen here. Like if I go back, I don't know, where is it? Here, we do not see too much correlation between the variability. Like an artist, like some artists can have like, let's say it's Beyonce for our sake of example, uh, have like um, her song, like a lot of time she, she just do hits and some artists can do flop and hits. So they are not, they are not correlated, these two guys. Is it good? Okay, we are here. So <clears throat> with this assumption, uh, the author write that and so we'll use later, but I haven't understood it. So the, basically like the correlation between uh, a song of an artist and the song of an artist equal the, uh, the proportion uh, of total variance between groups. I'm okay with that, but I haven't like, I'm, I'm not getting the demonstration, but. Maybe later it will make sense. Okay, so now we are doing posterior analysis and we'll divide it by simulation. And I think later I have also like um, simulation, analysis, and prediction. So if you follow, before we had just like very few parameters. Like uh, let's say if I go back here, here we just have, I mean, we have a lot of parameters because we have a lot of model, but every model have just two parameters, mu and sigma. Now we are building a new model, which will have uh, mu g, which we the so the mean popularity for every artist. We have forty-four artists, so it's forty-four mu g, and three global parameters. This is our priors. Uh, I mean. This is not exactly our priors, but uh, two of them are. No, it's our priors, mu, sigma g, and sigma mu. Let me check if I'm correct. Yeah, this is our priors. Uh, so how do we do that? <clears throat> so we still use like the standard and function, nothing new except like this part here. So we still use the one to say like we have no predictor. But we have like this kind of like a pipe, I call it a pipe, to specify that it's a group. This is exactly the same if you do like use LM in R or LMR in base R. This is the same syntax. So I think it's helpful. Uh, uh, excuse me. Is this because I've just uh, read something on Slack about this uh, uh, formulation? Is this like a random effect that you yes. ask from, yeah? Yes, your yeah, input model can be understood as random effect, yes. Yeah, okay. This is not, I mean, I, I would say like probably people are doing distinction like in some place, but that's the same idea, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, and here like also like you have this prayer covariance, which is probably related with that. Uh, that's uh, because like it's it just, but they said like stuff we will learn chapter 17. So they do not explain it, but said like we will see uh, letters, but it's equivalent to exponential one, to a, a distribution that's follow exponential one. So I was like, okay, uh, I'm following you. <laughs> I will not read chapter 17, no, but. <laughs> So basically, what we do is adding a random effect. Yes. Yeah. And this, yes. I mean, it's yeah. not a random effect because, like, we know it's artists, but it's a grouping that will add a random effect everywhere. On popularity. Yeah. On popularity. What we are trying to predict is the popularity. And to predict the popularity, we are just using data. I mean, our priors, data 
and a group. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, I didn't. I do not uh, print the verification of the MCMC, but it went well. I still print uh, the prior summary. So this is the prior. This is what we get, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we can do a quick uh, posterior predictive check to see like it's not too bad. I will say like it's not perfect, but the shape like we are lacking like this this little the small stuff, like this little like uh, bump in popularity. So I don't know why, but it's happening. And then let's inspect our simulation. So the stuff like we always do because like we are setting up four chain here, we usually have a, uh, I never remember if it's a matrix or a list of data frame. I think it's a matrix of four data frame that we need to convert to one data frame to uh, have like a more easy structures. So this is done here. Uh, I have like just uh, show you like the dimension. So we have like 20,000 um, uh, new value of, of 47 parameters. And before like we will have an object. <clears throat> so uh, let's, we'll start with analysis the global parameters. So mu, the global mean. Sigma y, uh, which is like the, the sigma <coughs> within group. Uh, here, like the equal, the intercept, the sigma and the sigma uh, parentheses, artist, uh, semicolon, intercept, variable intercept. This is what is written by the Stan, uh, Stan JLMR function. So if you open like the, if I go like to my, I don't know if it works. Let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. If I open like this, which one it is? Uh, no. Where is it? Uh, so I do not have it. Mm, no, this one. Yeah, this one. I don't know if it's safety, but. It's not, it's not, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's not the correct one because like, uh, but if you, can you see like the top of the, um, the column? So this is basically it, like the intercept, it's clear, like this is basically new, the mean of every um, artist. And then you have like uh, the intercept for every artist. So the mu, uh, the b, which is in, b, if you remember in our equation, like let's go back. So we have this is the same syntax. So I have this is this is also here. Mm. If you remember, our B was also here. You know, we have like mu plus BG equal the mu of artist. So the B is the same. <clears throat> this. Okay, so this is object uh, look like that. So you have like the mu, the sigma y, and the sigma mu, which is the variance. So it's squared. So you have to be careful of that. They give you the standard deviation for the sigma between groups, uh, within group, but they give you the variance um, uh, between groups. This is not a, like you see, this, this, this little square is not a typo. They, they mention it in the, the text, okay? Okay, so we can use the broom mixed, I, um, a package that has a tidy function that will basically like give us a quick summary. So it's, it just return a table uh, from one point. So it, it gives you like the intercepts. Uh, so it's here. See the effect here? This uh, argument effect can take a lot of parameters. So this is basically like, as you work with this, this uh, huge data sets, I mean, not huge, but um, Data set, or uh, you can do it by hand or use a um, packaged function that do the same basically, but uh, that make your, your life a bit easier. So the fixed is a term made for glo uh, global, the global parameters. Then it will return your global parameters. And uh, if you want the um, 
the intercept par artist and the standard deviation residual, so the variation between the song of one artist, you need to set up effect egal run par. Run par uh, is like meaning randomness or variability parameters. So this is a all new jargon, which I still find hard to understand. So uh, if I'm using this function, I would probably just Google a bunch of stuff. But uh, so that's it. So just to, to, to see if you follow, um, what do you think SD intercept that artist is? It's it's that second bullet point. <laughs> Sixteen point four point four. The second bullet point. The yeah, second. it's the second bullet point. It's like the variation. Uh, no, let me think. No, it's the sub uh, bullet point. This oh, so the, it's. It, this is the the standard intercept artist is um so it's the global it's, one it's sigma mu it's, it's sigma mu okay yeah yeah it's r no <laughs> sigma mu sigma, sigma mu. mu is a global variance yeah and then sigma it's, it's, y it's, is the it's basically it's the this. variance between artists between their okay. mean popularity is it good like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have to basically every time to say that to remind me because I just like don't remember. Yeah, it's super hard. Like I was in <laughs> the subscript this chapter. Like, <laughs> like basically, like so. But well, if if you are like in the wild with the data, I I definitely encourage you to check that and verify it. But, so yeah. so so when you put in the random effects, are we essentially like fitting and everyone has the same intercept? I mean, so everyone has a different intercept. Uh, but it has know, the same slope. Not, not, not giving a random interface, uh, random effect here. D don't. This is just like a, a wrapper, like parameter and randomness. Do you mean that? No, no. So I guess it's like if we actually had, for example, a predictor, yeah. and then right instead of this empty thing, and then you you set the artist level yeah. as a grouping level, then yeah. if you had to plot the the average popul popularity line then yeah is it does it just end up that everyone has like a run has a different intercept i think yes it will make it as a different intercept yes and then is does the slope also differ i think also yes okay i would have to check but um i think yes this is the idea like we could make a quick example but um well, uh, this is the standard error estimation as well, the 2.441. 2. Point which one? Yeah. Uh, Not table. The, the first little table. Uh, the first table is the intercept. So basically, the mean of uh, the mean, the, the, the global mean, like if we pull the 44 artists. Their global mean is 52.5. Remember our prior our prior 150. So we are close. I mean, um, I need range for 49.3 to 55.6 uh -huh. with a standard deviation of 2.41. Uh-huh. Yeah. So but this, this is do, do not confuse the standard deviation, the, the standard deviation, this is a standard deviation of uh the inter of new. This is not the um, Sigma mu. <laughs> this is like the, the two point forty one is just like the standard deviation of the way we estimate uh, mu. Tricky, no? <laughs> yeah, but this is pretty close to the, that two point five that we didn't know what uh, yes. was about. Oh, 2.5, I understand it. It's when it's, they put 52. That I 52. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you're right. Good point. This is very close too. Yes. So this is the, where was it? Here. So yeah, we close. We, yes, this, this makes sense. 
we are like using a normal distribution with that, yes. Uh, okay, so let's remind that this one, like this first line is sigma mu, which is the variation between um, artists. And this standard observational residual is the variation between uh, one song of an artist. And if this is just like the, the small like, uh, so this is the sigma mu divided by sigma mu plus uh, sigma every step square. This go like far, 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 this around 54%. Um, that's mean like we have more uh, variation between artists than variation between their song. Which makes sense. So if, if you have something like that, then then would one add up to go back to the fixed model? <laughs> what? Sorry. To, to the complete pool model, if if the variation if, between yes, if within uh, artists between yeah within artists is bigger than the variation. I mean, it, between it's bigger, but not too much. Like it, it could be like if, for example, at one times we have like way more uh, in our proportion, like uh, we have like, let's say like way more variation uh, between song than between artists. Mm. It, it, yeah, what's the point of having artists? Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The, the, they said that also in the book, oh, like okay. with a small example. Like this is why you are checking it because sometimes, yeah, or let's say also like if, if it's not the case, the opposite, if we have like basically like no variation between uh, an artist, like every every of their song is a hit, and uh, every uh, and you have vari strong variation between the artists. Yeah, you can also go like for another model. Do I like mix it? Probably, but yes, the idea is like you are checking this proportion because maybe at one point it makes no sense to have the artist category. Or the song category. Like if, if for example, like every song is the same, you can just, I mean, if at the same popularity, we don't need the song category, no. Okay. So to remember, uh, we have the mu g, which is equal to the global mean plus uh, some parameters. It can be positive or negative. Uh, and now we want like doing the posterior analysis of group specific. So let's say like I want to work on Maya X or Beyonce. <clears throat> we have mu and BG, or this is produced by our simulation. So we can either like use the tidy uh, function from boom mixed, but here you are you are going to use another new one which is run val that's gonna extract it for you. And uh, it will extract for uh, the, here it will extract the, um, so the confidence interval and the confidence level are 80%. So we'll have for each group, uh, here I just take the same samples on them. So the first two and the last two. Uh, so you can see like Maya X, uh, remember like our mean is like something of, for, um, how many was it? F 52, something like that. I have a bit small difference than them. This is probably like the MCMC result. And uh, <clears throat> the Maya X is like uh, ma between, uh, so it's 50 minus uh, 40 or either minus 40 or minus 23. So she's around like 27 and 10 at 80%. Etc. Etc. So this is one way of doing it. Okay. If if I check this 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 the what's artist summary is, we just have for every artist uh, seven variable, which is mostly like the number of chain. I mean, three of them uh, are variable from the Monte Carlo, the new numerous of the chain, the number of iterations. So it's not like it, did, it doesn't describe the result, but it more describes the simulation. <laughs> Another way, uh, we can combine our simulation to simulate the posterior mu g. So this mu g plus mu plus bg, it's also on our 
big data frame or is it this one like the spotify uh, hierarchical data frame uh contain <clears throat> like simulation of uh yeah it is uh of every intercept and beta intercept by artist remember like uh, where is it here when i show up like, it's here see like for the intercept of chris golgari we have it also this is like the b intercept etc uh, etc et here we are so just like you you, you just change artist by the name of the artist and uh, we can do like, well, so this is where like they use spread draw. Uh, this, I think it's a way to gather information <clears throat> and mutate uh, when you have gathered this information to, um, I mean, you are basically like <clears throat> spreading the data frame uh, with intercept and the artist uh, specific. And uh, you, you recreate like the basic emoji with each the intercept plus the bg because we are spreading that makes you a huge data frame basically like 44 um, <clears throat> times uh, uh, 20,000 with the seven row so i can show you so that's that's a big data frame like our artist chain and uh with that we can now have like uh a sim <clears throat> We have no like uh, the like for every artist like it's better to show you maybe yeah, where is it here artist chain uh, where is it here so maybe it's a bit too aggressive on my computer no it's good so you will have like uh, the first uh, so you will like uh, spread every value obtained times the number of artists of our uh, first data frame. That's huge, it's, it's quick, but it's, it, it, can, it could lead to big data frame. And that's it. When you have like this huge uh, simulated data, we can do like every kind of summary we have done before. And, and that's it. No, nothing new uh, to do it. I mean, the, the code here is like, the, the difficult part is understanding how to produce uh, this um see i had the warning here so maybe i was wrong uh, federica the pipe or, or lisa the pipe also produce you the warning of gathers that will yeah. be the pretty but gather is inside some other function yeah it's inside spread draw uh, in fact because it, it's something that happened to me as well i didn't use gather at all so i didn't uh so i think it's some uh yeah it, 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 it's inside spread draw, which I think it's in tidy bias. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is. Um, so when we have that, uh, we can produce like a, a quick summary. And that's it. And then uh, if you take the summary, uh, we can produce this wonderful graphic, which is way better. No. Uh, I open. I open to the cat. I come back in few seconds. Back. So, what we can see is like uh, we have like uh, way more. Like it's way more precise on some uh, artists. and also like, but. Also, the variation can change. You know, some are very low variation and some are very bigger variation, which is great. Okay, quiz. <clears throat> Why do we have, like, let's say here, some very similar posterior mean, but with bigger interval? Do they have more songs? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Some of them we have more information. Nothing, uh, nothing to add. Simple. Okay. <laughs> it's like a no, no, not all the things are difficult or tricky. You know, it's just to check if you are away. Wait. Okay. No. Uh, we oh, have done a posterior analysis. Let's do some prediction. 
Okay, we have like basically two cases of prediction. Either the artist is in the data set or the artist is not. And we will do the two of them. Okay, the first we'll do Frank Ocean. I still don't know him. He's By cool. His... What? He's, He's cool. cool. He's yeah. cool? You can right. have that Ocean. Um, sorry, one second. How much longer do you have left, Olivia? It's... Oh my God, I have like, oh no, it's quick. Okay. So oh. like 3.03, so. No, no, I will try to be quick on that. So first case, we know him. Then we can just pull uh, his MUG from our uh, simulation. And in Sigma Y, we don't need to like, uh, and then this is like, we have two sources of variation, of variability, like is viability, is viability uh, um, like let's say like is, uh, uh, the variability like of him, intrinsic, I will call it, and then the variability that we are like putting it because we don't know exactly like its correct um, popularity score, let's say. We are just trying to estimate every time. So this is it. So what we are doing is like, <clears throat> oh, by the way, there is a quick posterior predict function to do of that, but uh, here, like for the example, we are doing it by hand. Okay, are you happy though? <laughs> to do it by hand. And <laughs> so, th so this is it basically like, uh, we are just uh, using like this, uh, we are just drawing like uh, the same numbers of our results with is mean and sigma. This is it. This, there is no magic here. Like we are just applying this formula to get uh, uh, estimation. And then you get like a huge, uh, you get like this data frame with every piece of information. And then you can like rules, that's it. This one was not difficult, but how do you do when you don't know um, uh, the, a new artist? This is a fault here. Well, uh, you have to first estimate the mu G, this, the mean of the artist. So for that, this is what I have called like the new, art, a new, new artist you will need like uh, to create uh, this, this new information. So to go fast, this is here. You will use like the intercept that's inside of the, what you have simulated and the sigma mu, which is also something that you have simulated. You just have the square root of it. Because you know, if you remember well, we, this, remem this, this stuff like uh, give you the variance and not the standard deviation. You know, all of that, I, I could definitely see myself out, but yeah. So first you transform like the uh, sigma, which is the variance here. Sigma artist intersect intercept and sigma mu. And this is, this is this two piece of information I provide you by the simulation. Then you assume it, it's normal, which is not a huge, and that's it. So this is all like you can do a prediction on an observed group. You need to, uh, obviously, it adds variabilities because, like, you are adding variabilities. And uh, after, like, this is the same process. When you have, like, uh, the mu g, you just need to calculate the sigma of the um, sigma y. Okay? Or if you are lazy, you can just posterior predict without faults. And uh, that's it. And we can also see, like, uh, you have, like, obviously, more months and bits like the new group to be like whoever group have more variabilities at Frank Ocean, if I pronounce correctly. Woo. Okay, we speak a bit about it last week about shrinkage. So if you see this result, this is the result we have. Uh, so why the blue dot is the real value and the uh, Light blue is the predicted value. What do you, what's, what's, what seems to be like, what trend do you see? Uh, don't focus on the shrinkage. Just what trend did you see here? Okay, we are short on time. I'll give it to you. Okay. Basically like the predicted value tend to be closer than the mean, than the real value. So 
you can say like they're shrinking to the mean. Is it good? So I give you like the correct <laughs> definition later. <laughs> uh, shrinkage refers to the phenomenon in which the group specific local trend in a hierarchical model are pulled or shrunk toward the global trend. Because you are using um, in the model um, the mu g equal mu plus something, basically like uh, you are using mu to predict mu g. So do you have an impact of mu in your prediction? Shrinkage increased as the number, I, I also like put it like, as the number of observation of group G and G decrease. Like, <clears throat> less we have observation, more we are going to use the mean instead of our data. So I think this is easy. And shrinkage increased when variability within group, sigma y, is large in comparison of the variability between group. Because like, the, let's see, we can probably see it in some places, <clears throat> which I think, uh, because like when we have a big variability inside of the group, we are still uh, putting maybe too much information from the global trend. Here to get you, uh, to give you an example, the artists that shrunk the most are those with smaller sample size and popularity level at the extreme spectrum. Like for example, Maya X and Camilo. Okay. I mean, Camilo doesn't shrink that much, maybe more like uh, Lil Sky. <clears throat> Quiz. Okay. We're good. We're good. The, the last point are very easy. Uh, with the no pool head, complete pool head, and hierarchical. So we remember all these three kinds of models we use. Let's say we have the same population, but we draw another sample. Which will, be, which will be the most or the least variable of the three model we used. And the same, which one will be the most biased or the least biased uh, estimators? Biased, biased. No time still, I give it to you. No, you try, you wanna try. I help you. There is one which is very stable, but it's very far and vary, it do not vary too much. And there is one vary a lot, but uh, can be biased. If it helps. Like if you have to pick like, let's say, let's go back here. This is one, this is like the <clears throat> no pool. And this is the complete pool. Which one have low variability and which one <laughs> have high variability? <laughs> okay, I give it. The complete pool. Yeah. So, so obviously <laughs> when you are like, uh, this is like the famous trade-off bias variance. When you are like not taking into account, for example, the group, obviously you have less variability, but you tend to be more biased. And in the other opposite direction, if you take the artist, obviously you are more biased. Uh, no, you are. No, you are less biased because like you target well an artist, but you have like uh, more variability in your model. And finally, the best one is obviously the hierarchy one. Okay, uh, this part I found not that helpful, so I didn't go too much into it. I think it is easy to distinguish what is a group and a grouping variable and what is a predictors. Because usually uh, I understand all the data was collected. If you understand all the data is collected, you know like some things that can be used as a predictors, then as a grouping variable. They give you three examples. So. I encourage you to go through them. They are very easy. You can also take an example, like let's say like I have like the gender at birth of this group, artist. Do you think it will be a grouping variable or predictors? Sorry, can you repeat? I sound that let's say years. like I, I'm adding to these <laughs> data sets. Let's say okay. I'm, I'm adding to these data sets. Uh, 
I give more information. I, I'm giving you the gender at birth, their sex. Oh. Do you think a, it will be like a predictor a or a good variable of their popularity? Predictor. Yeah, it's predictors. Why? Because mostly um, it's have no hierarchy with the, um, with the song. We can also use it simply as a way to predict the popularity with the artist. We can say like, oh, maybe male or female, whichever, uh, get more popularity. So I think it's an important to just read it, but I don't think like if, if you have made a data analysis and stuff, you will not do distinction. I mean, this is not an error you will come, you will do, I think, as long as you understand how data was collected. Summary, and at the end, this is our first model with group, yeah. Uh, woo. Woo. Still no predictors, but I think it was good. Uh, observation on one group are independent to another group, but correlated in the same group. This is what important with this model. So basically, if Maya X release a new song, <clears throat> our popularity will be less, uh, will be correlated with the other song. But uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not correlated with if BNC is a new song. Okay. We discover new parameters. This is the group specific parameters. This is basically like mu g, like the mean of uh, the popularity. So it depends on the global mean and the variation. While global parameter, we already know they existed, but we use it just as the parameters. And, learner, and learning from one group to another will lead to some shrinkage. So this is one of the characteristics of the, this model <clears throat> that produced. So um, you basically like by using information, you are pulling uh, your results uh, with uh, pulling, you are dragging or shrinking this information toward the results, toward the, the information you, you use. So this model are less variable than the no pooling because no pooling um, have a lot of uh, uh, pooling uh, and less biases than complete pooling because complete pooling do not vary, do not uh, vary, but uh, are strongly biased. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I understand it could be hard, especially because like you have a lot of annotation and uh, the annotation is not the same uh, between like the package and the book or stuff like that, you know? So yes, I encourage you like, be careful, <laughs> but that's it. Yeah, I think that was the end. It, yeah, the gym. Just needed more sync, the, 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 the notation. No, 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 no. that's the end. We just have like, but anyway, next week, we are doing the same, but with predictor, I think, no? With predictors. Uh, let's see. Yeah, predictors. So that's it. Question? We good? Yeah, I think. So we correct a few like typos and uh, push it to the repo. So yeah, uh, do we have someone next week? We good? Let me check. Before everyone run. To the, to the normal <laughs> life, normal and happy life. With a bias. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is. Brendan. He was not here, so <laughs> I hope he will do well. And after Frederica. Okay, we're good. So cool. see you next week. And Frederica, maybe see you on Saturday. Thank you. Bye. Bye.